Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebase.com, which is the home of online learning for the double bass. And we're in Leeds at Left Bank, which is this pretty cool venue. Uh, we're on lockdown here in the UK, and uh, there's some cool spaces available that we can go and film in. So we're really delighted to be here today. And I'm joined by uh, a wonderful double bass player. It's uh, Nick Blacker from Go Go Penguin. So great to have you here, Nick. Yeah, good to be here. Thanks a lot. Um, we've just been filming this interview, and there's a lot of things happening with your bridge. We've had loads of like uh, questions in advance from the audience about equipment and what it's like. So for people who don't know Nick, uh, he's a member of Go Go Penguin who are basically out there gigging. All, how, how, many, how many nights were you away last year? You said earlier it was a... Well, I think it was 2016 we were talking about and I did uh, 200 days away from from home in a year. So it's a lot of, a lot of gigs, a lot of traveling. Yeah, and it'll be really interesting to hear your experience as a double bass player because there was so there must have been quite a lot of pressure on you to move across to, uh, you know, electric upright or... Uh, so, mm. but you, you know, you've really put the sound at the forefront of what you do. Um, what about some of these bigger gigs that you've done then, Nick? What are the kind of some of the venues that you've played that, that uh, you know, would be a, that stand out to you that are a bit different? Well, I think some of the, the gigs that we've done, we just need really good amplification for like the, where it's not like playing in a concert hall or a jazz club. So we, we do a lot of like festivals where there's like rock and pop and electronica going on in between us. So, you know, it might be there's a drum and bass DJ before us and then Sleaford mods on after us or something. So it's like, you know, a lot, you need a lot of amplification, a lot of volume and these are big festivals. So that's uh, something we've had to spend a lot of time thinking about. So what about, well, let's start with the instrument. First of all, tell me about the instrument. What are you playing? Uh, so the instrument is, um, it's a German bass. It's you know, roughly 100, 120 years old. I don't know the exact date. It's and it, beautiful. And it's actually um, a factory, one of the early factory made ones. Um, so mass manufactured, I guess, in the, I think it's a Dresden style. Um, that's a great sound. Can you give us a couple of the, of the low notes? It was something yeah. juicy. Yeah, it's just, that's what you want. Yeah, I just always like the, the bottom and then, you know, getting up into thumb position as well. Just, it just has everything that I, sort of wanted really it's um within my price range at the time but this bass has been with me for about 20 years now so this is on. this is the this is the instrument this is the yeah or, so even if i like you know it's maybe not the prettiest instrument or anything but um it's just you know it's way together <laughs> in this bass <laughs> I, I i i've tried a lot of instruments there was a time when we were um just using backline instruments for about a year and a half with gogo -Go penguin and trying lots of different things with amplification and and pickups and trying to put them onto whatever instrument I got given on a festival. And, and I always pick this up and it just feels like home really, yeah. compared to like some of these instruments it might be a beautiful 200 year old French bass or whatever, but I think, well, I don't like how it's set up or, you know, and this just, this is me really. Yeah, we were, talk we were talking about my bass earlier and it's not mm. like, it, it, my bass is certainly not a fancy instrument, but it's like, it's stuck with me and it's the consistency and, yeah. and like, you know, it's got a nearly, like your bass instrument, a very even sound. Mm. Um, wh what strings are you using? Um, so the strings we've got on are um, Eva Parazzi, is it Vike? Vike, yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I use them. Um, I haven't tried loads of different strings. I used to um, have Tomastic Spira chords, which I really liked, uh, um, and they're great. And the only reason that I decided to change was, again, like with some of the gigs we're doing, where it's really loud, and we've got like monitors on stage, and more bowing. Just like it's so in your face when you when you're bowing with the Tomastics because it's so bright. Mm. It was really it's almost like the musical equivalent of punching yourself in the face. You know, <laughs> like I'm just sort of like, oh no, I've got to pick up the bow because of the difference in um, you know sound that you get. So I decided to come on to something that was a little bit more hybrid. Yeah, either practices, but I really love them. They're really good. Great set. Yeah, great, great set. And uh, I've tried. Um, is it Didario Hel Hel Helicor, Helicors yeah. have had them as well, which are kind of in the same ballpark as mm. the Tomastics, really. Yeah, yeah. And, and what's this? Ex you've got some kind of extender or something on the uh, on your E-string? Yeah, this here? is called a hip shot bass extender. Uh, unfortunately, it's not actually getting. So on the new album, um, we wanted to get to um, a low D, which I guess you can do with the C extension things. Yeah. But it's always just a D that I've been a drop D that I've been doing. So this 
basically he's oh cool so it just drops it down so you can just do it quickly on the gig that's the idea behind yeah. that um yeah. so yeah i just had that fitted recently oh cool uh, and uh yeah and tell us about uh pickups and things you seem to have a lot of stuff going on here at the moment. yeah well this is it see really. if we can get some nice close-ups of this microphone is that an sm58 or something it's or? not no a lot of people think that it's actually this is an audix om6 okay. um and it, it it does sound really good but the reason why we settled on this again is because of the level of the gigs that we play so there's a lot of spill we, our drummer rob's pretty loud yeah. and and the gigs are pretty loud so you know it does pick up a lot of spill and i think Joe, our sound engineer, was saying that, you know, this gets used for like heavy metal vocals quite a lot for that kind of reason. <laughs> but it does sound good. Um, there's other ones you can use, like DPAs are really good. I think for mm. recording, we had a DPA in the foam in the bridge and then another mic on the bass. Um, so, yeah, that's just to get the it just sort of the icing on the cake to make it sound a bit more like um, a, an acoustic bass through the amplification. But then I've got two pickups. So that's um, I have an Underwood there which I use for running effects through. Cause I've got a pedal board with a lot of things going off. So all the effects go through the Underwood. And then this pickup here on the, the wheels of the bridge is a Yamahiko, which um, is, I've tried a lot of pickups. Mm. And for me, this is the best one out there. Mm. It's um, very similar to the Fishman Full Circle, mm. which is a good pickup. I tried that, I like it. But the Yamahiko, it's just a little bit more detailed for me and it's got the this bridge is a cross between the two wheels so i think on the fishman you've just got the, the it comes from the one wheel but it's on uh both it's on both yeah so, so, so a, how does this what where does the sound go then so you've got the the underwood is for the effects yeah so on my pedal board i've actually got four separate di's right so like the the um <laughs> so the amahiko is like a clean thing goes through a di straight to front of house the underwood I use for um, effects to run like I've got loads of effects like sub and uh, distortion and delay and all sorts going off. So you know, it's not like a traditional jazz setup. This yeah. is it. <laughs> and then um, and then the microphone just to give a bit more of a, the finger authentic kind of bass sound as well. Have you found that adding the mic um, has dampened the sound at all, or is it not 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 perceivably? It doesn't bother it's you. It's negligible, really. Mm. Uh, if it does, it really isn't it's yeah. it's not it's not much yeah uh, it is a really good sound but when i'm recording at home if i'm just putting something into ableton um i'll just stick the mic in the bridge and and, and, st and do that just to get ideas down it sounds good now i know nothing about effects pedals but i know everyone's going to be wanting to know what effects pedals and things you've been using so how does it work from there what what kind of uh, equipment are you using on that side of things um i probably should have brought my pedal board it but um it's so I, the, the main effects that I use is a delay effect. So it's called a reverse delay. I use that loads on V2.0, the first album I was on. And then now it's more getting subs. So there's one um, uh, pitchfork it's called. Really? So um, electro harmonics pitchfork. And that's really good for getting a really low subby sound. So when you're on a big stage at a festival and there's subs under the floor, as soon as you hit it, it's, yeah. very, it's a weird feeling being a double bass player hitting a note and then all of the stage like <laughs> <laughs> reverberates it's kind of like the opposite of like no it should be the natural acoustic sound you know it's like it's not possible for me to do that in the type of gigs we're doing so um that's what happens with the the sub and then i have a, another one called a soul food which is kind of like a bit of a fuzz distortion as well the names are always so cool yes yeah. uh yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other equipment stuff that I forgot. And into like you're using the bow on the gig, which is I've noticed you use the bow quite a lot with effects as well. Yeah, you know um, that's always a really cool thing to hear. Yeah, yeah. Um, sort of giving. Um, I used to do that a lot more. I've kind of calmed down a bit on the bow. There was like it kind of became a bit of a go-to thing whenever there was a um, like a sort of gentle section. It's like get yeah. the bow out, and I thought you know it's sort of. I'm, I'm doing that thing again so I'm, I've been getting away from it but practice wise I've been doing loads with the bow and yeah I play the French bow so and in terms of um, backline I guess if you're touring you're not using your own amps and things are you or how would no. that work um, so when we first started I, I had an acoustic image head because mm. I, I love acoustic image I think they're brilliant amps for double bass players uh, sound fantastic but again with the, the what we're doing where we're going it's like 
there's no point taking a, an amp, amp head with us everywhere. So we use backline. Yeah. And so I use an Ampeg SVT, which I don't recommend any double bass player gets one of them if they're just doing gigs yeah. locally because they're really heavy, they're massive. Yeah. You know, there's no need for it. But if you don't have to lift it, it it's well, so <laughs> yeah, it, it's more like every backline company in the world knows what an Ampeg SVT is. And yeah. they sound actually really good. Um, you know, it's a big valve amp, so I use them. And I have one for, for my own gigs as well, you know, when we're, we're on the road. But like you say, it's, um, it's all in the back of a trailer with crew and stuff. If I was doing like small gigs, I'd probably recommend doing um, the acoustic image because I really love those. And what about traveling in terms of, so you mentioned, uh, this is obviously your, your main instrument that I guess that you're recording with. And um, uh, you, you, we were chatting a little bit earlier about uh, a travel instrument that you've, uh, you've got recently. Uh, tell us about that. And have you been using it yet on, on shows? Yeah, or? well, it's actually my second one. So I had one, um, it was a Christopher bass, it was called. Yeah. And it's um, factory made in China. Um, which it's got a detachable neck and I'm, I'm so glad that there's a few players that I know who've um, converted their, their bases where, and I did think about doing it to this one, but the reality is that some of the damage that you get like flying around, like, like I say, there's some sometimes where, you know, if we're doing hundreds of flights a year, it might be fine for six months, but there's just one baggage handler, rogue baggage handler. Yeah, in a bad it, mood. Yeah, I mean, I think at one point my case, somebody tried to pick it up with a forklift because I, it came on the belt and it was, there was damage in, on the case that had gone right through the instrument. Yeah. And it's like, what could cause that? Even if I had my best shot with a hammer, I don't yeah. think I could do that kind of damage. So, um, yeah, so it, it, I use a, Christopher bass, but that actually got so badly damaged. Yeah. Eventually, I took it to my luthier Sam, and he's like, "Well, I can fix it if you want, but it's kind of getting to be beyond what the instrument's worth now." Mm. And um, so, me and Joe, our sound engineer, we we actually glued it back together and took it on the road for another six months. And it's like we're we're really on the edge doing this. So yeah. we've got a new one um, that, that I've just got just before lockdown it arrived the week of lockdown which oh wow is, perfect yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> so really, what am i going to do with this um so yeah that's ready to go and um uh, yeah it, the neck comes off i've got a great case that's made by uh jean Auré, yeah, yeah. yeah which is a brilliant case if anybody is going to go down that that route of um the detachable neck i would recommend that case because i did have one before it where the the neck and the body were in the same case together and that just that's what caused quite a lot of damage yeah i i uh, saw someone at a conference recently and they had a neck off base that they just had their beautiful you know italian instrument uh, converted for spent you know a thousand dollars or whatever getting it done they had their hard bow case in with the double bass body and the whole thing got kind of compressed and then cracked the front of the instrument yeah and it's all this it's so yeah so traveling and i think it's also really inspiring to hear people play the gigs that you aspire to on more affordable instruments and you know like i was listening to your tiny desk concert and and i guess that was the original travel bass yeah yeah, yeah. it sounds absolutely fantastic nick i mean it's a great sound yeah um, uh, this is look if you get it set up properly it's it's good. I mean, we all want to get that, you know, beautiful old Italian bass, yeah. obviously. For but if you can't afford it, and I, I can't, or definitely couldn't in the past, it, or I wouldn't want to for, for yeah. those kind of gigs because you'd be crazy, you'd just get damaged. So yeah, you just get a decent instrument that you like the sound of, an old um, or a new cheap instrument. As long as it's set up well, it, it's mm -hmm. good. And that Christopher bass has served me well but it has incurred a lot of damage as well. I think you're so right. I think good strings, and you've already mentioned the brands that you use, good setup. Sam, uh, Sam Wells. In Manchester, yeah. yeah. He's, he's been doing great work. I've heard some wonderful things about him. Yeah, he's brilliant. Uh, and I think, yeah, getting to know a good luthier and getting your bass set up really well is so important. So Nick, thanks so much for joining us and kind of talking us through all of the equipment. If you want to hear Nick uh, perform, we'll be providing links below. Uh, you can check out his music and hear how it sounds in context. And we might even provide a little bit of something in just a moment as well with Nick playing on his own. So thanks for watching, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you all next time.